This is Dr. Ray Henry, and thank you for joining us on the Moment of Destiny broadcast. You know, I can remember in 1971 as a student at MC, Mississippi College, all of us had to go to chapel. One of my favorite speakers was Bill Glass, a defensive end for the Detroit Lions and also for the Cleveland Browns. Bill said that his coaches taught them how to get down upon the line. You could not just casually come up to the line, stand around and, and be ready to go in and get to the quarterback. No, they taught them a three-fold stance, how to put those hands down, how to bend their knees and get their legs ready to blitz across the line. You know, the Bible tells us there is a three-fold component of what composes a committed Christian life. Listen closely to what the Bible teaches is a committed Christian. I want to thank you for joining us today in our worship services. Thank you that are watching by TV. Thank you for being with us today. The title of our message today is True Commitment. What's involved in really being committed to the Lord and living for Him? Some people say that they are when they truly are not committed Christians. We're going to be looking, first of all, at 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 1. If you have your Bibles, I want you to join with me as we read 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, True Commitment to Christ. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith, and they'll follow deceiving spirits taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars, whose conscience has been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is concentrated by the Word of God and prayer. And he tells young Timothy, towards the end of his life, both of these letters, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, are the last letters that Paul is writing to his young pastors. One of those young pastors is Timothy. Timothy joined him on his second missionary journey. Uh, he picked him up there uh, at the city of Derby and Lystra, that area. And Timothy traveled with him to uh, Tarsus and to Macedonia and Corinth and Athens and other cities, as well as going all the way back into Jerusalem. And so later on, as Paul is getting towards the end of his life, he is instructing Timothy how to keep the church that he has been appointed to as pastor, how to keep order, religious Christian order in those churches. This is what I want you to do, Timothy, so people will not get out of line and do their own thing and follow their own teachings and follow their own doctrines. And so he's given him instructions about what is right doctrine, and he's given him advice on what makes up a true Christian and what makes up a true commitment of oneself to Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people that say that they're following Jesus Christ as a disciple of Christ, as a follower of Christ, but they're really not. So today we're going to look at some components of true commitment to the Lord. I just want you to judge yourself. You pull out that measuring stick of the Word of God and just measure yourself by the Word of God to see if really you are truly committed to the Lord. Martin Berber, a Jewish philosopher, said this about commitment. I am the sum total of my commitments. What I choose to stand for and to count on, the choices I make, that's who I am. Those things that I have committed to do in my life, that's who I really am. All of us know George Barna. He is the man who does a lots of survey, religious surveys throughout the United States. Several years ago, he did a survey, and this was his conclusion. Materialism is in. Commitment is out. Traditional concepts, Barna said, 
traditional concepts of loyalty and the importance of membership in groups has been thrown out in favor of personal interests and self-preservation. He gives an example of brand loyalty. It used to be uh, people would have a certain brand of, of detergent that they would uh, wash their clothes with, a certain brand of soap, a certain brand of milk, or whatever it might be. But he says in America today, there's no such thing as brand loyalty. He says in most of the famous uh, food brands in America, loyalty to that particular brand is down 60%. No longer are people committed to a certain product. They choose what is best for them. They are not loyal to brands anymore. I'm afraid that uh, what uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, and he's all of our favorite Bible teacher, He's been at First Atlanta, Georgia, First Baptist Atlanta for about 50 years. This is what he said about commitment several years ago in a book that he wrote that was entitled Casual Christianity. And that's what we have nowadays, casual Christianity. They take it or leave it. This is what he said. So many Christians live expediently. They say, yes, I will follow Jesus Christ. And then they find out which way the wind is blowing. Those religious winds. Which way is the pressure falling? Which way will bring the most approval from my peers? Many Christians, he says, have a special clause in their commitment to Jesus Christ. He says one of them is a convenient clause. Is it convenient for me? to live for the Lord, to go to church, to go to Bible study, to go to prayer meeting, to go serve the Lord in some type of charity, do the Lord's work, to go witness for Christ. Is it convenient for me to do that and to be a member of that particular church? I can't serve on that committee because I have to do X, Y, and Z, and I just really can't put it into my schedule. So Dr. Stanley says there is a convenient clause in many Christians' lives. Is it convenient for me to live and serve the Lord? He goes on and says there's a safety clause. There's a non-persecution clause. If I'm going to be ripped apart by my friends or the media, whatever it may be, if I take a certain stand that that church is taken or Christians are taken, if I'm going to be ripped apart and judged by my friends and condemned by my friends, well, then I'm not going to take that particular stand for Jesus Christ. He says that many have a non-persecution clause. Few have signed this clause, though, he said. Few have signed themselves over to Jesus Christ without reserve. A non-reserve clause. Is that the kind of clause that you have? No matter what he asks you to do or what he asks you to take a stand for, you are willing to follow the Lord. This morning, we want to look at two or three things that compose a true commitment to the Lord. Number one, it is commitment to a person. Number two, it is commitment to a certain pattern of life. And number three, it is commitment to the people of God, the church. Did you get those three? Commitment to a person, Jesus Christ. Commitment to a pattern, the Word of God. And commitment to the people of God, the church. Number one, he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 6, it is commitment to a person. If you instruct, he tells Timothy, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. He says, take heed unto yourself and unto your doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save yourself and them that hear you. Some are committed to a church or a program and to a certain ritual that they might go through in life, a religious ritual, but they are not really committed 
to the Lord Jesus Christ and what He wants you to do with your life. Are you committed to Jesus Christ this morning? You're willing to, for Him just to, to take a contract out and you have a place at the bottom where you sign that contract and you let Him write in what He wants you to be and what He wants you to do, whatever He's going to tell you to do, you're willing to do it. Wherever He's telling you to go, you're willing to go. And you've already signed that contract ahead of time, you're willing to do the Lord's will ahead of time. Have you made that kind of a deal with the Lord? First of all, it is commitment to serve the Lord Jesus Christ foremost in your life. In 1995, along with about seven or eight other pastors, uh, we went to central Russia. Russia had opened up to Christians and other people to come in. And we were asked by the churches there, the Baptist churches in Russia, to come and teach Master Life and other teachings there. And while we were there, we were staying at a hotel in Nizhny Novogorod, and right next to the hotel was an old, old Russian Orthodox church. Now, I had never been to a Russian Orthodox church. And so I saw people come in and out of that church during the week, not just on Sunday. And I decided that I would go visit that church and take a little tour. And I went in and I noticed that they had about 25 or 30 pictures, about eight by 10 pictures. And these were pictures of the apostles. These were pictures of the saints that had been inducted into their roster of saints. And there was one picture the same size as the other picture of Jesus Christ. It was a very, very old picture because it was sort of crumbling up. And I saw one of the members of that Russian Orthodox Church come in. And she would bow and, and do the cross there in front of each of those pictures, 25 or 30 of them. And she gave the same attention to the picture of Jesus Christ that she gave to all the other pictures, even though they were only apostles or saints. Uh, she cheated, che uh, treated Jesus Christ the same way. And so she was committed to her little ritual that she probably did every day. She probably came in at the same time and did the same thing every day. So some people are not really committed to what Jesus wants you to do. You're committed to some kind of program or you're committed to some kind of ritual that you do. God wants you to be committed to him foremost in your life. The Apostle Paul said about his Jewish brethren, I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They seek to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And sometimes we're committed, but to the wrong thing. Are you willing to do what Jesus wants you to do without regard to how much time it takes, whatever the cost may be, you're willing to do what he's going to tell you to do with your life. Some years ago, the founder of the Christian Missionary Alliance Church, A.B. Simpson, wrote a little poem called Himself. And he says this is kind of what we're devoted to, everything but Jesus. So he wrote this poem called Himself. I'm going to read you a couple of verses. Once it was a blessing that he sought, now it's the Lord. Once it was a feeling, now it's his word. Once his gifts I wanted, now the giver only. Once I sought for healing, now himself alone. Once I hoped in Jesus, now I know he's mine. Once my lamps were dying, now they brightly shine. Once for death I waited, now his coming hail. My hopes are anchored safe within the veil. Once I sought for everything else in the world, but Jesus Christ, and now I am committed to Him and Him alone. Is Jesus Christ number one in your life? Are you doing what He wants you to do? Many years ago, the Holiday Inns were popular in America, 
You actually could invest in the Holiday Inns. You could purchase independently your own Holiday Inn. And there was one particular man who bought one in New Jersey, L. M. Clevens. He was CEO and part owner of Holiday Inn in New Jersey. And when he found out that they were going to build a huge $55 million casino right next door to his Holiday Inn, he handed in his resignation as the CEO of that Holiday Inn. And this is what he said in his resignation. It is my overwhelming, overruling regard and respect for my Lord Jesus Christ which leads me to this resignation. I don't think this particular lifestyle, at least what he felt, I don't think this type of lifestyle will be pleasing to Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. So I'm going to have to get out of the Holiday Inn business. And he sold his interest in that Holiday Inn and he gave his resignation because he didn't think that lifestyle would glorify the Lord. Is what you're doing following Jesus, doing what He wants you to do? Now, when we talk of commitment, our attention has to go to many of the devoted, consecrated missionaries that paved the way for the gospel around the world in remote areas around the world. And probably the most famous of those missionaries that, that went first to these heathen nations was David Livingston. David Livingston was a scholar. He, he was a well-known organist uh, throughout Europe and England. And yet he gave his life up. He was a medical doctor also. He gave all these things up uh, to go to the heart of, of Africa, the Congo, to share the gospel. And this is what he said. Listen to what commitment's all about. He said, Lord, send me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, but only sustain me. Sever any ties, but the tie that binds me to thy service and to thy heart. He went to the town of Mabatso, in 1843 to establish a mission station and to establish a Christian church in that area. He said when he got there, people heard about him coming there, the holy man of God. And they said that they, he, they came by the thousands for David Livingston uh, to pray for these people. They wanted to be healed of diseases. And of course, he couldn't heal all these people, but he would pray for them. And at night... He had them stay overnight and he would read Bible stories to them through a translator. He would share the good news of Jesus Christ and many would come to Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, there was nothing, no problem wrong with that particular area of Mabatso, except it was a region that was infested with lions. Lions, I said lions. And one day, David Livingston was going through the jungle and he was uh, confronted by a very large lion. Now, he had a rifle. And as the lion was approaching, uh, he took a shot at this lion and he only wounded the lion. And the lion kept going and mauled David Livingston and his right side. His right arm was paralyzed from the injury. He was asked by a group of college students when he came back to England to speak, what goes through your mind when you're faced with a lion that's about ready to attack you? And David Livingston humorously told this crowd of college students, and by the way, every one of those college students Many times they would mock the speakers, but nobody mocked David Livingston when he limped into that theater at that college auditorium and his arm was hanging by his side. Not one person murmured, 
But one of them asked it, what goes through your mind when you're, when you're confronted with a lion that's about ready to attack you? David Livingston said to that question, I was wondering what part of me he was going to eat first. Where is he going to start eating me? <laughs> and thank the Lord that he did get a shot off at the lion. And one of the natives, he got attacked after that. One of the natives picked up that rifle and shot and killed the lion. And he was protected and he was saved. But he says, I kept thinking, what part of me is he going to start eating on first? Here was a man that was totally committed to the Lord. Lord, send me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. You have, do you have that type of commitment to the Lord? I'm willing to go, God. Just you go with me. You strengthen me. You undergird me. You help me. And all the obstacles and challenges that I'm going to face, I'm going to trust you with these things to help me go through it. Number two, True commitment is not only to a person, but it is to a pattern. And that pattern is found in the Word of God. He tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 7, But reject profane and old wives' fables, and discipline yourself towards godliness. Take heed unto yourself and unto your doctrine, what you believe, right doctrine, right teaching. Continue in them, for in doing so you'll save yourself and them that hear you. In the book of Amos, Amos gets a vision for his people, Judah, of a plumb line. You know, a plumb line is how you keep a, a building that you're building straight. You want those bricks to be straight. I used to work for a, uh, the Sears Fence Company. And my boss is the one that would line up all the poles and he would put a string at one end and he would lead it all the way to the other end and he'd make a straight line. Well, we had to straighten out every one of those poles in between there. He would say, OK, move that one, second one over a little bit. Move the third one back over here. And he wanted it was his own plumb line. He was trying to to get it straight. And Amos said that God had a plumb line that he had set over the people of God, people of Israel. Behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not pass by them anymore until they get their lives straight. And what if God set a plumb line over America? What would be out of sorts? What would be things that he would say, hey, you're going to have to get some things straight and right with me if you're going to get the blessings of God. Here are some things that, that, that would be helter-skelter in God's plumb line in America. Number one, abortion. Since 1973, America has killed 50 million, 50 million unborn babies. Pornography is a $32 billion business. Illegal drugs... Uh, this is some years ago, was a $20 billion business. It's about twice that much today. And we could go on and on and on. God says, hey, I've got a plumb line that I have laid over America. And you've got to get some things back in line if you want my blessings upon America. He's put a plumb line over us. And he's asking us to get our lives in line with his word, with his pattern, which is the word of God. Are you committed to the church? Very few are truly committed to the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, but his body's here on earth. And that is the body of Christ, which is a living body, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you committed to the people of God? He tells Timothy, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. That's what we do at church. We teach the word of God. We preach the word of God. We ask questions about the word. What does this mean? How does this affect my life? We hear the word of God and then we seek to apply the word of God in our life. And church is the place that you need to be. 
that you can be around other Christians that have already gone through all the difficulties, all the pitfalls, all the ditches in life, and they can help pull you out of whatever jam you may be in, whatever crisis that you're going through. The church, the body of Christ can strengthen you and enable you to go through these challenges that all of us have in life. Are you committed? Are you really, really committed? committed to the cause of Jesus Christ? Are you serving him, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul says to Timothy, hey, if you do these things, Timothy, you will be a good minister, good servant of Jesus Christ. If you do A, B, C, D, and E. And if you are committed to the pattern of what God instructs us to be and do in the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, and if you're committed to the body of Christ, then, then you are truly committed to Jesus Christ. Not just saying you are, saying you are disciples. Jesus says, if you continue, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you're abiding in the Word of God and He's abiding in you, then you're going to bear fruit and your life is going to be effective and effectual and will bring glory to God. Don't say that you are truly committed to Jesus Christ and it's making no difference in your life whatsoever. Today you have heard what true commitment to Jesus Christ is all about. It is commitment to a person, Jesus Christ. It is commitment to a pattern, the pattern that we find in the Word of God. And it is commitment to a people, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you're not really going to be committed to Christ if you do not know Him personally as your Savior and Lord. If there's any doubts whatsoever that you know Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you love me. You sent your only begotten Son into this world to die for our sins. Jesus, I trust you and you alone to be my Savior and to become the Lord of my life. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, Give me your Holy Spirit today as a seal and a sign that I am a child of God. Now, if you pray to prayer like that, we want to hear from you. We do have some material that we'd like to send you on the Christian life. Give us a call and we'll send you that material. And most of all, if you don't have a church in this area, we want to be your church. We want to see you Sunday at 11 a.m. in worship.